Hello, welcome back to my favorite interior design podcast. I'm so excited you're here and I have a great topic today that I get questions on all the time. The podcast today is about why we work on a furniture floor plan first. And this is true in all of our processes here at Stewart Design Co. We do a furniture first approach and that's in commercial projects and in residential. I get tons of looks and maybe a little bit of uh, side eye from contractors sometimes because we start with the furniture first approach. But I wanna to share today why, and this is for everybody. This is for people at home that also aren't thinking about furniture when they're embarking on a new construction or a remodel project. And for contractors and people in the trade that maybe don't understand where the interior designer is coming from. All right, furniture first, why? I have four reasons why we start with furniture first approach. Number one is to understand the traffic flow. Up until this point, you have probably had your architect draw up the floor plan and get all of your building, your exterior, your roof pitch, all of the details worked through. And the architects generally work from the outside in and they look at how the windows and doors look on the outside, again, roof pitch, how all the materials are gonna to come together from the outside in. And of course, they're managing the interior too because they're adding walls and doors and the traffic flow. But now, once you start with an interior designer, you're really gonna get down to how you live in the space. And when we work in a space, we work from the inside out. And our number one goal is to understand how you're going to live there or work there and how you're going to function in the space. Having a floor plan with furniture on it first is so important because we're going to ask questions like, how do you live in the family room? Are you going to be watching TV here? Do you want a big loungy sectional? Now, at this point, we're not picking which sectional you're going to pick and what sectional you're going to have, but we need to know what type of furniture and how you're going to be in the space so that we can help you understand the rest of the design process. I'm going to give you a few examples throughout the, throughout the podcast here, but we need to know the traffic flow so that we can understand Let's start with where your TV is going to go. Sometimes in new houses, in new construction, and especially in production homes, I find that it is so challenging to figure out where they intended for the TV to go. It's, it's, sometimes it's insane. Thinking about where your TV goes is challenging at the beginning of a project when maybe you haven't even started any dirt work, but that's why we're here as interior designers to remind you or to do for you thinking about where the furniture is going to go. Okay, another reason that we look at where the furniture is going to go, and it's so important as our first step in the process, is to look at how the doors are functioning. Have you ever or do you currently live in a space that just irritates you because the doors are banging all into each other, maybe in your closet area, your closet, your bathroom, your water closet, two, two, uh, two closets in, in our house with two closets in the same room, and nobody thought about how the doors were gonna open and who was gonna be where. Well, that's what we're thinking about. We will look for any opportunities to put in pocket doors, and pocket doors are one of my favorite things. I believe they're controversial in the design industry, but I love pocket doors, especially a good pocket door with upgraded hardware that has soft close. So think about pocket doors and, you know, this isn't your grandma's pocket door where they're hollow and noisy and loud and banging around. We're specifying good pocket doors that are going to make you function in your space and make it so much more, make the flow go. All right. So we're looking at the furniture because we want to understand how you're going to live in the space to manage actually the furniture that you're going to have. And then we also want to take a look to understand where there's opportunity to change door functions and traffic flow pattern. The windows. Again, when the architect is designing the project, they're looking at it from the outside in and all of the windows might be symmetrical and beautiful and very tall and thin from the outside. However, it's hard to know what you're gonna do with some of your furniture when you haven't looked at how low the windows are. 
I had a project recently where it was already under construction and it was way past windows being ordered. And when we went to go look at the furniture placement because we came into the project late, the windows were so low that all of the nightstands are showing from the exterior of the house. Now it will, it, the only place in the room, because there were small bedrooms, we were trying to maximize with five, they're trying to maximize five bedrooms, that it was, there was one place to put the bed with two nightstands on the side. And so some of the rooms aren't gonna have nightstands, but some of them are gonna have just one, so the only one is showing through on the outside. So it's something to keep in mind about where the furniture placement is gonna be so that you can manage the windows. You might need to raise the windows or change some of the placement. And again, you don't wanna be doing that when you're in the middle of construction because windows are ordered pretty early on in the process and some of them are super custom and very expensive. So those changes later on in the project aren't really what you wanna be doing. So besides the traffic flow, looking at the door functionality and the windows, the next thing that we're doing is we're looking at electrical. So the fourth reason that you wanna choose the furniture first and look at the furniture floor plan is because you can add in electrical on the ground or you can add in extra electrical outlets all over the house. You can put them above the cabinet height, you can put them in vanities, you can again put them underneath sofas or where you're going to have sofa tables, but you really want to know how the how the house is going to flow from the inside so that you can add those things early on in the process because in planning, they don't cost as much money as they do to make changes further down the line. So, I want to reiterate are four main reasons for choosing furniture first floor plan opportunity is to manage the traffic flow and understand what how you're going to live in the space to look at the door functionality look at window functionality and to be able to make changes to the electrical make it more livable space early on in the process i encourage you to look at your floor plans and even sketch out a rough draft of where you want to put your furniture and the kind of furniture that you want in each room so that you can make those decisions early on in the planning process with the architect.